This is Eve Kristoff, lover of life, singer, dancer. This is Love Life with Eve, and I want to welcome you home to Eden. Eden is the place where all of our differences are embraced as men, as women, in opposite polarity, as many races, and we enjoy our differences, and we actually, instead of pretending that we're all the same, uh, we we acknowledge that we're not, and, and we, we have awe for the other. So today, I want you to embrace your your superhero because now that um, times have gotten so crazy with uh, uh, this huge baby as our president we have to um, take matters into our own hands actually times were always this bad for uh, many of my uh, on Mars again, okay? For many of my uh, Latin friends and African-American, African-African friends, this has always been, they've always known about the racism going on and the misogyny um, for women of color especially. Uh, so let's, let's talk about this, okay? To be a superhero now, you've got to uh, be part of the resistance, but I would say rather than resistance, let's talk about entering the flow of love. That's, that's what we need to do. Resistance always persists, but flow moves, it moves on, okay? So you are going to stand up. You're going to stand up to any uh, disloyalty to love that happens around you, okay? So this month, this is the, the couple of things I did. I was with uh, an employer who said a super racist thing in my, in, in my proximity. He, uh, a beautiful African man was walking down the street and he goes, oh, looks like he's looking for the cotton field. And, you know... I just turned to him and I said, you know, in my presence, that kind of comment is not allowed. It's, it's not allowed. And I really gave it to him. I, I talked about, um, I asked him, where was he always this racist in, in his whole life? And, and he had his, all of his excuses. And I said to him, if he ever did that again, I would never work for him. So I got fired. <laughs> and I am happy to have been fired. Okay, because had I buried that truth to, for money, I would have sold my soul in that moment. Okay, you can't make anything a higher priority than love right now, especially. Um, but especially on the planet, okay? So there wasn't too long ago that people gave their lives. They put their lives on the line with Martin Luther King. Um, with Gandhi the, in this whole non-violent movement which was showing love in resistance but more like flow, like we flow with what we believe in, we, we say yes to only this. Another thing that happened this week is I was at the river and two, uh, four boys were across the river from me and I was busy in my feminine energy, fast, fascia blasting and lotions and everything and I was aware, aware that people were watching me so I was like, oh my god, I'm going to do this anyway. But then I hear this boy screaming out, you psychopath, you psychopath. I'm like, whoa, something's going on over there, I'm going to ignore it. And then I, I started thinking, well, wow, what's going on over there? I better not ignore it. So I look over, and sure enough, one of the boys is actually trying to kill the other boy. He's trying to push him off a high rock, down a cascade of rocks, where he would actually die. And I realized, okay, I'm going to be ugly right now. So I made my voice horrible. I made myself a bitch. I, I screamed out, God damn you guys! You know, you stop that right now! They're like, stay out of it, lady. <laughs> I'm like, I don't care what these boys think. I'm going to make myself as ugly as possible. And I start shouting that, that way that moms do. Like, this is a sacred location. How dare you destroy it? And you could kill somebody that way. And I go on and on until the boys are 
freaked. They're done with being embarrassed by a woman who was went from beautiful to ugly in two seconds flat, you know. And they all disband, and the boy's life is saved, basically. So these are the kind of moments that we... How do you non-violently stand up to violence? Sometimes you have to match violence with similar energy. So basically, there was no violence in my soul. There was no actual anger. I chose to put on the voice of ferocity to scare the boys. So I'm inviting you to be a hero. Never let anybody make a racist comment, a sexist comment, a LGBT destructive comment in your presence. Stand up immediately. So last night another comment was made in my pre presence where somebody's like, Oh yeah, I just love all these groups where people are banding together. They're all coming to this event. I hope just that the Black Lives Matter ones don't come. Bam! I was like, what the heck are you talking about? What, why not Black Lives Matter? Oh, I don't like that phrase because other lives matter. And I'm like, this is not a phrase. These are the Black Lives Matter, th that came out of a visceral understanding that people's lives were not being treated with value in the media, with, with the cops, with, with arrests, with all kinds of things. It was a visceral understanding of an articulation of a reality, which is different than strategizing for a movement to have a certain, um, you know, way that they promote themselves. This is not about promotion, and it wasn't about anybody else putting it down, to think that, that 